It is homecoming Saturday. Welcome into Gibbs Stadium, where this afternoon the Wofford Terriers sitting at 3-4 and four overall, 1-2 and two in the Southern Conference, will look to break a two-game losing skid as they take on the number five team in the country, the Chattanooga Mocs, who have won five straight games. They are 5-1 and one overall, 3-0 and oh in the league, and they have won 10 consecutive Southern Conference games dating back to 2013. Last year in Chattanooga, the Terriers and Mocs played a close one through the the first half, Wofford got shut out in the second half and ended up losing 31 to 13. With the call on the ball game, here are your highlights with Jason Patterson and Phil Cox from the SOCOM Digital Network. And now on second down, there to work. Just underway from Wofford. And staying on the ground with it, Derek Crane moving forward. He's across the 45. Some running room. Derek Crane, the junior out of McDonough, Georgia, the Union Grove product. Second down, four from just outside the 10 yard line. Ball resting on the 11 and a half. And it's Huseman, he sees enough daylight to take it home. Jacob Huseman will get Chattanooga on the board first. He drives them down and caps it off with a run. He has really been, the, as you said, the mastermind of this running attack and trying to get the Terriers back on track today. After a first down up at the 39 yard line, they do go to the ground and we get our initial look at Ray Smith in this game. And he's in the Chattanooga territory around the 45-yard line. Ray Smith broke loose in the first minute of the contest a year ago to get Walford out front. Here his first carry, not quite that effective, but still very good for the Terriers. A second down and nine being faced by the Mox. Usman looked underneath, now fires it, has his man. Ball pops out. They're going to say incomplete. That is the second almost connection between Huseman and Alfonso Stewart. The sophomore out of Alabama, remember, was in behind the defense a little bit ago, couldn't quite hang on. Here, he brought it in, but they hit timely enough by Wofford's JoJo Tillery to knock it away. That was nicely done, and another big third down here. Terrier homecoming crowd coming to their feet. And the fans here at Gibbs Stadium imploring them to do so. The pitch, a little dose of Wofford's own medicine from Chattanooga this time. And a big lick right at the marker. Let's see where they spot this. Right around the 19-yard line. It looks like, at first glance, it's going to be short. And fourth down is coming up. Here's the, the hit. Lowering his head. Lowering that shoulder. And making the running back Bagley pay for the yardage that time. But the official change, as you said, Phil, coming all the way across in this measurement will determine whether Chattanooga from deep in their own territory at the 19 has to give the football back to the Terriers with a minute and a half to go. And it is short. Third down and seven on the first play of the second quarter. Still in there at quarterback is Brad Butler. And Butler fires a pass caught across midfield. And at the 43-yard line, it's R.J. Taylor. The sophomore out of Lexington, Kentucky stands tall. Jason, he really made a name for himself in the game at the Citadel two weeks ago. A losing effort for Wofford, but this is a young star that's emerging uh, in the Wofford receiving core. He's got great leaping abilities you just saw and fantastic hands. 32-yard attempt with the ball resting just past the 22-yard line. Kick easily has the distance, and he's through the uprights to make it a 7-3 contest. Chattanooga with a touchdown early in the first period. Wofford battles back with a field goal here. Well, you never know quite what you're going to see at a Southern Conference football game. We've got a good one, fifth-ranked Chattanooga leading Wofford 7-3. And just after that Wofford field goal to put the Terriers on the board, we had a marriage proposal here at Gibbs Stadium, Phil. You're going to get a look at Logan with the element of surprise as he works his way around to one of the cheerleaders here, Ashlyn Kitely, who ends up accepting the proposal of the young man who flew in from Texas to do it right here at Gibbs Stadium. And today, everybody here attending this football game gets to be a part of a lifetime moment. Oh, that is great to see. That is, that's pretty bold in front of all these people getting down to one knee, is having all kinds of time. Uh, in the person of Huseman to throw the football. He's not getting pressure. He has got all the time he wants to either run it or throw it. Great protection by that Chattanooga offensive front. This time looks for a man inside the 10. Instead, there's a Terrier there. The pass is picked off, and Wofford with one of the biggest moments of the ball game. It comes from Anderson, the senior out of St. Augustine, in the right spot at the right time. Take a look at Anderson. He hops the route and comes away with the football. 
Little bit of a underthrown ball. And that's actually JoJo Tillery there, Phil. 28 back there who was on the coverage. Tillery with another interception, a true freshman making his presence known. He made a name for himself last week versus Western Carolina in recovering an onside kick, so we already know he's got great hands. It's Tillery who gets him the football, but now it's going to take another of those Wofford third down conversions to keep this drive moving at the seven minute mark second quarter. They will go to the air. There's enough space out there. It's a first down and a whole lot more. As they go to Muller for a movement of the chains. Another third down conversion for the Terriers. Look at Muller, sits down in the flat and he knows exactly where he needs to be and everything else after he crosses that marker fill, complete cake. The time begins to slip away pretty quickly when this offense is rolling. Here comes another give. Again, long, loose. He's inside the 10, and he's going to be drugged down at the five-yard line. A touchdown saving tackle at the five as Lorenzo Long breaks loose, and we get our first look at just what Long can do in open real estate. What a nice job by Daquan Miller, one of the Terrier's interior linemen coming out and sealing a man up. What a burst of speed by Lorenzo Long as he'll come out. He may need to get a little oxygen after that long haul. On fourth down and goal for the Terriers. This is the 19th best rush defense in the country on the field for Chattanooga. And one of the better teams of late in the red zone, Wofford, trying to make sure they come away, not just with points, but with at least six of them right here. What will the call be on fourth and goal? They run the option to the far side, and the sizable Brad Butler at quarterback uses all of his 6'2", 220-pound frame to take it home for the score. How about that play call? Brad Butler on the option keeper. The Terriers decide not to go with the dive. They don't pitch it. Instead, Butler getting the start today. Fantastic job of getting in the end zone, and he took a shot, Jason, after he got in across the goal line. 120 to work with. Just 80 seconds left in this first half as Jacob Huseman Saw some space initially, but boy, did it close quickly with black jerseys coming from all directions. And Walford is forced a third down and around eight. And the Terriers forced this third down. They're going to call it a long eight right at nine. And Huseman under pressure again, and he's going to be dropped for the first time today. Huseman sacked on third down and nine, and fourth and long is coming. Walford having a, a lead by a field goal. Did up 9-7, but that touchdown drive, he was a big factor. And there is a big factor in Isaiah Mack, the nose guard for Chattanooga. Third in the Southern Conference with three sacks. The Tunnel Hill Georgia native is there immediately to meet the ball carry. So Brad Butler, who has taken nearly every snap in this game, and this has been the most troublesome one for Wofford on the day. It is on the ground, and Chattanooga comes up with their first turnover of the football game. The turnover battle had been won by Wofford to this point, but the exchange, the opposite of what the Terriers were looking for, and there is Josh Freeman laying on top of it when all said and done. They're in another tight one, early third quarter with 10 and a half to play. They face third down and goal from the five yard line. Huseman gonna roll out. His receiver covered and it's picked in the end zone. Wofford with the return set up. This time, it's Anderson with the interception. JoJo Tillery picking off Huseman earlier. This is Anderson this time around. And the two defensive backs, JoJo Tillery, number 28, Breon Anderson, number 26, picking off Huseman, and this one staying what looked like a sure scoring drive for Chattanooga, Phil. Give Daryl Vining a lot of credit for putting pressure on Huseman. And Jason, we have bragged so much on him today, but that was not a very good decision. He forced it a little bit. Vining didn't allow him to pull it down and run with it. Second interception of the game for Huseman as the Terriers have the football back. One senior reading the mind of another as Breon Anderson rises to pick it off. And now Wofford with the ball loose on the turf for the second straight play. And Chattanooga saying they have it again. Wow. Have the mocks come up with another big turnover? That appears to be the case. And it is Chattanooga football just outside the 10-yard line. And now they go back on the ground and a touchdown. 
So Chattanooga back out front, their first points since their initial drive. Chase, Nel Chase Nelson, Nick Colvin also trying to help out in that rushing effort. We'll check in with Evie after this play. Second down play coming for Wofford. She has more injury news off of that Wofford sideline. Out across the 30. It's going to be a movement of the chains, a first down on the run by Brad Butler. Mox team under the direction of Huseman. Looking for space, but there will be none. Michael Roach is in there, the first on hand to wrap up the Chattanooga quarterback. Watch Roach break through. And then he wrestles Huseman. And it's going to be Enrique Ribeiro to kick it through. And he's good. Found a way to come back and break the hearts of everybody in Lexington on that night. Huseman, nowhere to go, and he will be Ridden out of bounds by Michael Roach, the sophomore. The Terriers are now in a mock territory. So Logan Christian moves the chains on the reception from Butler. And now it's Long again. And Long gets away from the first couple of tacklers and is only held out of the end zone by Chattanooga's Vantrell McMillan. The defensive lineman turns and is able to pull off the shoestring tackle on Long. Watch him from behind, and that kept Wofford from logging six. Just across their own 20-yard line. Huseman, again working with Crane, and again that front line of defense for Wofford, not denied. Third down. There's a first down on the table at about the three-yard line, but he's not worried about that. Touchdown, Brad Butler. He takes it all the way, and with 2.25 left to go, the Terriers are within two points. Well, the Mocs had the read option work for them. Now the Terriers have it go in their favor. Beautiful job by Butler pulling it out of long stomach. Great fake. Broke a couple of tackles. And now the Terriers have to convert. Two's been the number. On a two-point conversion for the tie. It's Butler again, and he's in. Tie game. Brad Butler making it a habit of finding the end zone for Wofford. And we're even up at 17 apiece. Usman, short of the marker, and the immediate tackle will bring up fourth down and about three. A couple of black jerseys there for Wofford. Their timing was perfect, and they wrapped up the carrier for a finish after the pass of only about five, and it's fourth down. That they are going to go for, Jason. Goodness. Fourth down. They're going to call it two. It's a long two. Across the 45-yard line is what Chattanooga is looking for. Mox quarterback Jacob Huseman, the senior, barking out signals. He'll run it to the Wofford side of the field, then the late pitch, and it's perfectly executed for a first down. Derek Crane when you need him the most. So big in the second half. Only got six carries in the first half. What a gutsy Gutsy play call by Russ Huseman running the option. That is absolutely huge and a big time play call by the Mox. But to escape Wofford on this Saturday afternoon in late October, they look to the foot of Enrique Ribeiro. And here is his 38 yard attempt to win it with four seconds remaining. And he nails it. Time runs out and the Chattanooga Mox will take down Wofford on the road 2017. Coach, you played the number five team in the country right down to the wire. Right. Um, you mentioned you thought your defense was very, very good today. What'd you like? Well, they made plays. Uh, we uh, were able to take the ball away from them on a couple intercepts. Uh, we were uh, really good at uh, tackling uh, for the most part. Uh, they've got explosive weapons they've got a tremendous quarterback and they've got uh, a lot of skilled kids that that can uh, make you miss uh, i thought our plan was really good um, the uh, the two intercepts help us stay in the game uh, chattanooga is a very good team very good team their uh, their defense is uh is really good 
and uh, and their offense is really good, and they, they do a great job in the kicking game. And uh, they're number five for a reason. Um, you know, they they lost a close one to Jacksonville State, who almost beat Auburn. So uh, there's a there's a lot of good football around this country, and uh, you know we we happen to have them for homecoming. Um, we uh, we worked really hard. We had a good plan for them, and uh, and we we fought them tooth and nail. Came down to the last four seconds, and them making a kick. Your last offensive drive, you knew you needed the touchdown and the two point conversion. Right. You just went old school. You just handed the ball off and said, "Go get them between the tackles." Yeah, uh, w we felt like, quite frankly, that our offensive line had an advantage. Uh, we thought that we could create some space. Um, you know, the play calling w was good. Uh, you know, you you gotta gotta have a a little bit of luck, uh, but uh, we executed and uh, we were uh, able to attack them and uh, did a nice job reading it and and running the football. Brad Butler went almost the whole way at quarterback today. Thought he showed a lot of toughness out there. What did yeah. you see out of his play? <laughs> Oh, that, there's no doubt about his toughness. Uh, he took a shot down there on, on one of them that he scored on, and uh, I think he had a bruised rib. Um, came to the boundary, and our people checked him out and stuff like that, and then he got feeling better, and we put him back in. But uh, uh, all of our guys, all those guys that play quarterback, you, you got to be a tough guy in this offense. you, you got to be willing to you know, stick your nose up there and, and go north. And uh, a lot of times you get them big bodies that are coming down and hammering on you. And... Uh, we're uh, we're a football team that's awful close. Um, we're a football team that uh, is way way different than we were at the start of the season. But uh, ultimately, I I, I think uh, your team's defined. You know, uh, are they giving up? Or are they giving in? And this crew, they've been stepping to the plate every week. Road trip to VMI next yeah. week. Different yeah. kind of offense. They love to sling it all over the place. Yeah, your thoughts on defending the Kedets? Well, I think the the biggest thing about defending the cadets is make sure that you uh, take care of the football offensively, keep them on the boundary as much as possible, and give them limited possessions. Uh, the quarterback that they have, uh, really a good player, uh, tremendous arm. They, they, have, uh, they have guys who can run by you, and, and they'll throw it. They will throw it, just slap by you if you get lazy with your feet. Uh, we, we've got to do a great job with pass rush. We've got to do a great job with fitting the defense. Uh, they're an outside zone team. Um, they have a guy that, uh, for uh, a better term, he's, he's a guy that's going to be between the tackles. He'll be at that second level, and he'll be a guy that's, that's going to try to help him create an extra space. And uh, we're, we're going to have to be sound defensively. Uh, this was a very physical game. There was a lot of guys got nicked up in this game. So uh, we'll have to do a head count tomorrow and uh, see where we are. But uh, I, I believe our guys will come out working and, uh, you know, getting ready for a tough EMI team. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Terriers lose a tough one this afternoon here at Gibbs. 20 to 17, it came down to the final play. Chattanooga's Enrique Ribeiro knocks through a 38-yard field goal, and the mocks remain unsullied in league play going to 4-0, and while the Terriers sink to 1-3 and in the SoCon, now 3-5 and overall. Next up for Wofford, a trip to Lexington, Virginia. It's been a while since we've been up there, as the Terriers will take on the VMI Cadets next Saturday. That'll be a 1-3 kickoff. We'll have radio coverage at 1 o'clock on the Wofford IMG Sports Network. I'm Mark Hauser. Thanks for watching Terrier Vision.